Hey everyone, my name's David, and um, I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. Um, I also uh, have content sort of all over on Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook, and I try and do Twitter, although I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> um, and I've also recently started a podcast, um, uh, which you can find if you go to the Apple Podcast Store and look for Make Moments Matter uh, Elementary Music Ed. Um, and there are a lot of places you can find my stuff. Uh, but the other place I would say is um, makemomentsmatter.org. It sort of all gets stuck there at some point. Recently I just blogged about I can statements for um, the music classroom, um, how I use them, a couple different ways you can display them or use them in your music class. So check that out. That's the most recent blog post at makemomentsmatter.org. But today I'm here to talk to you about finger plays. And um, because last time I did a video, I did one about puppets, and people apparently loved how silly I looked. And so I figured, why not do another super ridiculous video where I'm like using my hands and you can make fun of me later. But um, so I'm talking about finger plays today. And finger plays are basically, if you don't really know what that term means, a finger play is just any song or poem where you use your hands to sort of tell the story, to animate the story. Um, there are a lot of great examples of that. The Itsy Bitsy Spider, that's a really famous finger play. Um, and so I wanted to share just a couple of my favorites with you today. And um, I'm going to start with a poem because uh, I think some people do mostly just poems and some people do mostly just songs. And what I really wanted to talk about was a couple of songs today. But I'm going to start with a poem because finger plays can be uh, poems or songs. Um, and so this is one poem that I love doing and I do it around this time of year because um, if you watch my previous video you know that my kids love Peter, my rabbit puppet, and so I bring Peter out and then um, we also do little bunny foo-foo around this time of year which is another awesome finger play because uh, you can do little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest. Kids love that too. So we've done a lot with bunnies at the beginning of the year and one of the poems that I do goes like this. I saw a little rabbit go hop, hop, hop. I saw his little ears go flop, flop, flop. I saw his little nose go wink, wink, wink. I saw his little eyes go blink, blink, blink. I don't know what you could do on your hand for eyes. I just blink my own eyes. I said, little rabbit, won't you stay? He looked at me and hopped away. And I love that one because we're doing um, a lot of things with rabbits at the beginning of the school year anyway, with Little Bunny Foo Foo and Peter, my, my puppet, who's the rabbit. But Peter, the rabbit, who's the puppet, also talks to the kids when he introduces speaking voice that they're animals and sometimes they're wild. And if you saw Peter out in the garden or outside of school, he might just run away from you, not because he doesn't like you as a kid, but because rabbits just don't spend time around people, they get nervous around people. And so this poem sort of reinforces that, and that's one of the reasons I really like it. I also like it because we've just done Little Bunny Foo Foo, and we've used this hand motion for a bunny, so that makes a connection for them. Um, and also, I just love doing finger plays at all with K1, because it starts to get them to use their hands um, in a different way than maybe they've been asked to before and start to use different fingers in different ways. And this is a great setup for when we go do Thumpkin a little bit later when they have to do fingers by themselves, things like that. So I love anytime you can do the rabbit action because it, it isolates these two fingers and um, it's something that they're easy, able to do pretty easily. I found that poem, I think, um, in one of John Fire Robin's resources. I'm not sure which one. It was a long time ago, and I think I found it in a couple other places too. Um, speaking of resources, while I'm talking about them, because I will forget this later, I have a couple places that I go for finger plays. Um, the first one I go is the Fire Robin book, which I think is the lettering's backwards, sorry, but it's called Fire Robin, or sorry, it's called The Book of Finger Plays and Action Songs, and it's compiled by John Fire Robin. It's great, and it has um, just a ton of different um, songs and poems and things in here that you can use for all different levels actually. Um, I mostly use finger plays for the younger grades but this has stuff for all different ages. Um, the other Fire Robin resources I would point to is his first steps in music curriculum. I'm not trained in it and I haven't done a first steps like set up or anything. Um, I went to a workshop once and I, I've done things with his books and I like his books 
this has a lot of great songs and resources and a whole section about finger plays. So if you already have this, it's on page like 116 or something, um, and if you don't already have it, it is, um, it is worth, it's worth the investment. Um, I can't remember how much it was when I got it, but it's, it's a chunk of money, but it is, it's great. And there are a lot of songs, not just finger plays, but other things you can use, especially for pre-K, K, and one. And then the last book that I found um, that you may have heard of or may not is called I Winker, Tom Tinker, Chin Chopper, 50 Musical Finger Plays with Piano Arrangements and Guitar Chords. And this is by uh, Ron Himmler. Oh, that's illustrated. Sorry, it's by Tom Glazer. But um, another good resource. I just got this one um, online on the Facebook page, the Music Teacher Buy, Sell, Trade, which is a Facebook group. And if you don't know about it, go check it out. But I got this um, so cheap and it's really, really, really good. Um, it has some, some great things in here that I use over and over, things I've already used and a couple I'd never seen before. Okay, moving on. So those are the resources I use, two fire oven books and then the Glazer book. There are a lot of other things. Um, a lot of those We Sing books are great. Um, if you've never seen the We Sings, they're usually pretty small, like We Sing in the car or We Sing over the mountain or whatever, and there, there's some good finger plays in there. The two that I wanted to sing for you, with you today, um, are uh, Open Shut Them and uh, Where is Thumpkin. And these are two that I do almost every year with kindergarten for sure and sometimes with first grade, depending on my first graders. I think that they're just great to set up the year and they're really great for a lot of things, not just for the fact that they're finger plays, but they're good for classroom management. So I wanted to share them with you. The first one I'll do is, is open shut them. And um, this one's great because it teaches kids to sort of control their bodies in different ways. Um, it's great because you can bring in you know, just the hand dexterity and hand control and hygiene and all sorts of things, but mostly kids just think that it's funny. And so I have a lot of reasons that I like it, but they like it just because they think it's fun. So I'm not gonna sing it in the normal key that I would do it with kids. I would do it higher with kids, but I'm just gonna do it a little bit lower because I don't have kids around so I can use um, a little bit more natural voice for myself and then you have less to make fun of. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna do, just run through it once and sort of show you how the whole thing goes. So go. Open, shut them. Oh, that is definitely not at all the key. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, creep them, creep them, creep them, up to your chin, 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 open up your little mouth, but do not put them in, 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 open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap, 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 open, shut them, open, Open, shut them, put them in your lap, lap, lap. I've always known it as an A, B, A form, but you could do just A, B, just the open, shut them, and the creep them, creep them. But I like to go back to the open, shut them at the beginning. So, a couple reasons I like this, because it teaches kids where your hands are supposed to go. Open, closed, in your lap, or whatever. So often in the hallway I hear, First grade kindergarten teacher saying like, nope, your hand shouldn't be touching the wall. Oh, your hand should be wherever. Oh no, you need to, you know, watch your hands or whatever, or you know, bumpers up or whatever. And um, just teaching kids to know like, be in control of your hands. This song is all about be in control of your hands um, and losing control of your hands and then regaining control of your hands. So that's one of the reasons I really like this song. On the first day I introduce it, um, I don't start by singing. Um, I start by saying, great, take your hands and show me open and shut them and open and shut them and open and shut them and put them in your lap great bring them back up open shut them open shut them open open and i mess them up. i try and do that and sort of mess them up a little bit and they love that I'm like oh that's so much so then we open shut and we put them in the lap and then i'll try open shut them open now give a little clap 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 and we try that so i basically do everything out of time and not sung at first and then I go back and I 
I do it again and I say, great, I'm gonna sing and you have to control your hands. So I sang, oh, open, shut them, it's not all the same key. And so then they, they do what, you know, they follow the actions and they open and they shut. And I only do the first part, I only do the A section. Put them in your lap, 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 and we stop. Great, let's try that again. Open, shut them, open. And at this point, I'm not saying like, sing along with me. I'm not doing that. Because usually on the first couple days, my kids are pretty hesitant. And so instead of saying like, sing it, when they've just heard it once, I, I say, I'm gonna do it again. And you do the actions. And then they can do that. And, and even if they mess that up, it's less pressure for them. I, I worked for several years with English language learner students and the less pressure you can put on them, the better. So even if you don't have English language learners, if you can take away the singing element and just have them do the hands or just ask them to do the hands part, some of them will start to sing with you on their own. Um, and for me, for me personally, I think that's okay. But I don't require them to sing right away. So we do the open, shut them, clap, 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 open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your lap, lap, lap. We do that a couple times. And that's great. And then I say, ooh, I have a new part. And then we creep them, creep them. And I talk about what creeping is because that's a word they may not know. They might be, they might know like creeped out. And so I talk about creeping as sort of like sneaky, like very quiet. And our hands were supposed to stay in our lap and somehow they got out. And they creeped all the way up to your chin. And here's why, and I tell the kids, ooh, your hands, they're trying to go somewhere they're not supposed to. They're trying to get in your mouth to wiggle that tooth that your teacher said, don't wiggle in my class, and your fingers want to go in and do it. And so we can't let them in. And so, you know, we they think that's hilarious. They creep their hands up to their chin, and then I go, open up your little mouth, but do not put them in, and they usually giggle at that, and that's super fun. So. Um, I do that a couple times. I say, oh, put them back in your lap. They're gonna stay there, I bet. And then I start to let them move up. And so then I sing the creep them, creep them. And again, I ask the kids just to do the motions and not the singing. Because at, at this point, again, if they're not ready, okay. So I just wait. So we do, we do that part and then I do that two times or so and then I go back to open, shut them, open, shut them. And then by the end of the day, I might say, um, if you're ready, you can sing along with me. We're gonna do it all one more time. And we go through it all one more time and then we're done. The next time I see them, and I'll move on to something else for the rest of the lesson. The next time I see them, um, I'll bring them back to the spot. Usually I sit down in the chair and they sit down in front. We you know, have our little thing. And, and then I, um, I sort of rehash what we did last time. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Give them one more clap, clap, clap. And go through all of that. And when they creep up, this time I do something different. So the second time, they're expecting all up to your chin, chin, chin. So this time I'll do creep them, creep them, creep them, creep them up to your chin, chin, chin. And my hands have not ended up on my chin. And they're like, uh, Mr. Rao, what are you doing? And I'm like, uh, they're on my chin, right? And they're like, no. And I, I do this for a couple reasons. First of all, it's funny and they like it. And so it gets them to correct me and it gets them to think about what, where are his hands supposed to be because they don't necessarily expect that I'm gonna do it wrong. Um, the other reason again is because I worked so long with English language learners, um, it helps them if you can reteach body parts. So when the kids see this and they hear the word chin, the English speakers will be like, no. And I'll be like, oh wait, what is this part of your body? Oh, it's your ears. <sighs> Whoops, I'm so sorry. And then I'll do creep them, creep them, creep them, creep them up to your chin, chin, chin. And again, they'll be like, no, Mr. around, that's not it. That's your, you know, shoulders. And I, I love doing that because every time I introduce a new part that's maybe incorrect or whatever, um, the kids are, are reiterating, the, reiterating the correct let terms for the body parts and that's really great for kids not not just the English language learners but all kids in kindergarten first grade it's it's good to have the repetition with body parts um, and and have them remember what those things are so eventually oh, I fix it after two or three times of going to the wrong place then we do go up to your chin and we do open up your little mouth but do not let them in 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 and before I go on I'll say why don't we want our fingers to go in our mouth what's why, why is that wrong? And you know, raise your hand if you can tell me why. And kids usually can tell me why. Um, and they talk about, oh, it's germs or whatever. And I say, right. And so then, um, if you know, we don't want the germs from our hands to come in our mouth, there are a couple ways we can clean our hands. And I, um, I have them 
go through the motions of washing their hand. Again, this is sort of a finger play thing, but it's just um, having them react out what that's like. So I talk about, oh, so then if we're gonna wash our hands, what do we need to do? Well, we go to the sink and we get our soap and we maybe put a little bit of water on and then we rub around and don't forget to get the backs of your hands and don't forget to get in between your fingers and all around and all the parts of your hand and your fingernail you know i have them run through and then we wash and then we dry and all of that and that's just sort of fun for them um, and then i say or if you're not close to a sink and you have one, some of this instead we call this hand sanitizer and i would say and if i needed hand sanitizer I would do this, and I pretend, I go I want more. And I do that a couple times, and they're like, no, you're not supposed to do it. But how many kids do that actually? <laughs> they take like 14 pumps and then just throw it on the ground or whatever. Drives me nuts. So if I can teach from the beginning of the year, that's not right. <laughs> and then I say, okay, well then there are some kids who do this. Boop. Oh, I have enough to do just one finger. Is that enough? And we talk about not enough or enough, whatever. And then I, I actually do one, one pump. And then I, I say again, you want to get it all around your hands and in between your fingers and all over. But you don't want to take them when they're wet and wipe them dry in your pants. Because then the germs from your pants are on your clean hands. You just let them dry in the air. This is totally a sidebar, not having anything to do with our song, but it does have to do with our hands, which is really what we're sort of working on and learning right now, and it sets them up to know how to use hand sanitizer in my room so I don't have to like mess with that ever again, ever have to talk about that again. So that's great, and I, I like doing it with kids, and they totally relate to like, yes, I was that kid who did the 14 <laughs> pumps of hand sanitizer. Anyway, so then, then we do the song one more time. And then after that, I'm sort of done with my teaching part of that song. So if I ever have another like two minutes or three minutes, I might come back to the song and sing it a couple times and you know have the hands creep or whatever, or, or creep to different places or whatever, if I have time to kill. And then that song is just there for me if I need it. I love that song. It's a great song to start with. Um, great for the beginning of the year. The next thing that I come out with after, like the next sort of finger play I do, is Thumpkin. And a lot of people know Thumpkin and love Thumpkin. And, but again, I sort of treat it the same way as Open Shut Them, and I don't start it by singing. I, I did that for years and years, and it was not always super successful. And so I started doing it a different way, um, and I wanted to sort of share that process. So. Thumpkin um, is a song where you meet the five fingers on your hand, and you have to remember to wear a ring. Um, I usually have a ring on on most days, but if you don't, there are always like you know little play rings or party rings or whatever, um, or rings on the top of cupcakes is a thing now um, that you can save. Um, and I always save those anyway because there's that really fun song, "Bitty Bitty Hold On, Lost My Gold Ring One, Go to Kingston, Come Back Again," and it's a passing game where you have to have a ring in your hand and pass it to the person next to you in a big, big old circle. And you, by the end of the song, you have to figure out where is the ring and you gotta guess, but you're secretly passing it. So I always, I usually have a couple of rings handy um, for, for the bitty, 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 hold on. I think bitty, bitty, come on, bitty, bitty, something. Um, and it's a, it's a fun little song, a little game, but I always have rings around for that anyway. So if you don't have a ring on, it's good to have them around, but you need a ring for ring man for the finger. So instead of starting by singing Thumpkin, I say, oh, great, you're, you know, we're in our spot, maybe we just did open, shut them, and now we have control of our hands. And I say, uh, show me a thumbs up. Good, show me a thumbs down. Show me thumbs all around. Sh uh, make your thumbs wave. Say, hello. Oh, hello. How are you? How are you? And the kids are usually echoing me at this point. I'm great. Thank you so much for asking. Good, and then run away. Ooh, run away. Wait, where, where did they go? Come back. And then I run the back. I'm just basically running them through the actions that they'll be doing in the song a little bit later. This is the thing that I sort of learned over the years is that if you prepare them for what they're going to do before they're actually required to do it, it makes it so much more successful. So I'm just having them do just the actions out, out of any context of the song right now. So, oh, hello, how are you? Oh, I'm so great. And then it, this is especially great if you can introduce the phrase um, and you could say like, how are you? Oh, I'm great. And then I say, oh, let's be more polite. And you say, how are you today, sir? Oh, that's very polite. I live in the South now, so like everybody says, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, which is sort of cool. 
but you go, how are you today, sir? And the other one says, very well, thank you. Oh, this one's also polite, how exciting is that? So then th those phrases I think are the most difficult in the song, how are you today, sir? Very well, thank you. And so if you can have them do it just speaking, it, it makes it so much easier once they're singing a little bit later. So then I say, did you know you have five finger friends on every hand, on both of your hands? Here, look at my five finger friends. I have one, two, three, four, five. Can you do that? Can you make them wave like that? One, two, three, four, five. This is another precursor. I'm having the fingers wave because this will help us not use our middle finger a little bit later. <laughs> but um, I have them wave and then I introduce them. I say, this first one right here, his name is uh, thumb. Most people call him Thumb, but his full name is Thumbkin because Thumb is a nickname. Just like you might call someone Nick instead of Nicholas or Xander instead of Alexander. Well, his, his nickname is Thumb, but his full name is Thumbkin. Show me thumbs up, thumbs down, and then I say, can you make Thumbkin say hello to the other thumb? Hello. And you say hello back. Hello. And you might do that. How are you? And you know, how, how are you today, sir? You could do that again if you wanted. I say, great, but Thumbkin is not our only finger friend. Our very next finger is this one right here. And this finger, sometimes people call your index finger. And I like to call him, sometimes I call him my index finger, but I also call him my pointer finger. Here's why. Point to the ceiling. Point to the window. Point to the carpet. Point to your pointer point to the teacher. And so I have them do a little bit of pointing. I, ha I have never yet had students where pointing with one finger is inappropriate or offensive. Um, I know if you follow the Disney rule, <laughs> Disneyland, you'll never see a Disney character employee point with one finger. They always point two fingers or their whole hand. I've never had that come up with a student, but I know that's out there, that that's a, a cultural faux pas in some uh, places. So. I don't know, be aware of that, <laughs> but I've never had that happen. So pointer, he points around, he does the thing, I say, oh, have your pointer say hello to your friend. Oh, hello, pointer. Oh, hello, how are you? Very well, thank you. And as often as I can say very well, thank you, I throw that in because it messes kids up later. So they do their thing, um, and then I say, ooh, good, now they're not, that's not the only person, and I, I love throwing in, open up your full hand or open up your whole hand to go to this, and that prompts them for our next friend. And I say, this next friend, he is the tallest of them all. Look how tall. He's taller than all the rest. Oh, way taller than Thumpkin. That's why we call him Tall Man. And you know what? Look, he's in the very middle. And so he's our middle finger. And we call him Tall Man. But let me tell you, Tall Man and his neighbor, they get very sad when they have to stand by themselves. They get so lonely. And they're such friendly fingers that they want to spend um, all day with their other finger friends. So we never let them stand by themselves because that makes them sad. And some kids are like, okay. And then some kids are like, hmm, but mine stands by himself all just fine. And I'm like, right, but open up your whole hand because we don't want him to stand by himself. And so then I say, but guess what? He's so friendly, he can wave. And so you make your tall man wave. And this is actually pretty difficult for them. I mean, it's difficult for me, but it's difficult for them to move just that one finger. So asking them to do that is great. And while, they're, while the rest of the kids are practicing waving their one finger, you can go to that like one or two kids who's still doing this to like everything because he doesn't realize. And you're like, oh no, open up your whole hand. And I, I never make it about it's your middle finger and that's rude. I don't, I just don't go there. Instead I just say, oh no, he just doesn't like standing by himself because he gets lonely. And so I just make it about that and then we wave and then I say, oh, and then, <laughs> you know, whenever I'm ready and we move on, I say the next man, what makes him special? What makes him different from the others? And people are like, oh, he's not as tall. I got that the other day. They're like, oh, he's not as tall. That makes him special. Okay, yes, yeah, he's not as tall. And then um, eventually they realize, oh, he's wearing a ring. Ah, right, we call him Ring Man. And so, um, you know, Ring Man loves to be by, with all his other friends too. We never make him stand by himself either. And there are some kids who are like trying, you know, defiantly to like put up that, and that's even harder than their middle finger to put up by itself. So the, I just say, remember, open your whole hand and just make Ring Man wave. And they can sort of do that, and that, that works for them. 
And sometimes I'll say like, if you see rings on people's hands, usually it's on this finger. So even though this finger doesn't, oh, I have a marker. <laughs> even though this finger doesn't have a ring on it, we still call him ring man because he's right next to tall man. And then, you know, we do our thing back and forth. And then, um, and then I say, and then the last finger on your hand is this little one. His name is Pinky. Can you make Pinky wave? And then this is something I did at camp a few years ago, but um, we're gonna do our pinky exercises. And so you go forward, forward, backward, backward, side to side, all around, scrunch up, stretch. And they're like echoing each one of these. Scrunch up, stretch, and put it on your nose. Um, I don't know, it's just fun. And sometimes we'll do that in line if we have like 30 seconds because I see the teacher down the hall and I need something for them to do that controls their hands. Pinky exercises are great. So Pinky does this thing and say, how are you today, sir? Oh, very well, thank you. And I say, you see, he doesn't mind standing by himself, but remember, tall man and ring man, they just don't like it. They just get very sad when they're standing by themselves. So now we've met all five finger friends. And I say, great, now, take, go back to Thumbkin, take Thumbkin and say, how are you today, sir? Very well, thank you. And then make them run and hide behind your back. Woo, run away. Ooh, run away. And they run away. And then we're ready to, to sing the song. I say, I have a song that goes with our friend Thumbkin. I'll do the singing. You match what I'm doing with my actions. You just make your fingers move and I'll do the singing. Because, and then, wait, but where is Thumbkin? I can't find him. Maybe if I sing the song, it'll help. And then we do, where is Thumbkin? Where is Thumbkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, thank you. Run away, run away. And I say, oh my gosh, did you hear what they said? They said, how are you today, sir? Very well, thank you, just like we practiced. And the kids are like, oh yeah, that's great. And I say, now we're gonna do the same thing, but not with Thumbkin. We're gonna move on to our next finger friend, to Pointer. So hide your pointers behind your back. And then we go through and do the same thing with Pointer. And um, then when we're ready to move on to the next friend, I say, now remember, Thumpkin doesn't mind standing by himself, T Pointer doesn't mind standing by himself, but Tall Man gets lonely. So when you bring Tall Man out this time, remember that you're going to bring him out with his other friends and make him wave. That a lot of times avoids this happening. <laughs> because it will happen. So it avoids that happening. If that does happen, I just say, remember, open up your full hand, open up your whole hand. Um, and so then we do, where is tall man? Where is ring man? And then where is pinky? And we go through all of that the first day. And again, I don't ask them or require them to sing along with me. And part of it is because it's brand new. And for kindergarten and first grade, having them do the actions is a lot of work to ask them to do. Um, so it's a lot of them thinking and a lot of them trying to move their hands in time. If you think about all the complex things you're asking, you're asking them to move fingers on their own, you're asking them to move them in time with you, you're asking them to do both hands separately and together, um, that's a lot. And then you're asking them, if you say, like, sing along, you're asking them to sing too, which is a different set of skills. And if you listen to the song Thumpkin, it is like an octave range. It's, it's a very wide range for kindergarten. So I don't even ask them to sing along this first day or or the second day if they don't want to because it's just a lot to do. So we go through the whole thing, we do um, all of our finger friends and then we might put them away and be done. The next day when we come back to Thumpkin, a lot of people do want to sing along, great, go for it, you know. Um, and I start with reminding them, oh our five finger friends, we've got Thumpkin and we've got Pointer, Pointer who points at things and we've got tall man the tallest of them all and we've got ring man and we've got little pinky here on the end oh that's so great now let's hide our hands behind our back and we're gonna do our thing and so then we do thumpkin just fine and he comes out and goes away and um, we sing, I sing through it and they do the actions the second time I remember this is the second day this is I'm coming back to it in, in a further lesson so the next day so that's next day when we get past thumpkin we get to pointer I do this where is Thumpkin? Or sorry, but we've already done Thumpkin. Where is Pointer? Where is Pointer? Here I am. Here I am. And again, this is the case of the incorrect, <laughs> incorrect body part coming out. And the kids catch me. They're like, no, 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 Mr. Rao. This is like open shut them. You're doing the wrong thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thumpkin's like, hee hee, I just wanted to come out. You know, and so then, and then I do it normal with the Pointer, right? 
So then we sing through pointer and then I, I give him a reminder. I say, tall man comes out and waves. He never comes out by himself. So then we do tall man. Instead of tall man, Thumpkin comes out again. We send him back and then we do tall man like normal, right? Okay, so then we get to ring man. We sing through all of those other things. We get to ring man. And instead of ring man coming out, Thumpkin comes out and then we send him back. And then after Thumpkin comes out, this is like the fourth time we've done a finger in this song. So then I have Pointer come out after Thumpkin. We're like, no, Pointer, quit. He's like, I listen to Thumpkin. And then he goes away. And so then Tall Man eventually does, or sorry, Ring Man does eventually come out and does this thing. And then for the last one, you could just go straight to Pinky or you'd do, where is Pinky? Where is Pinky? Here I am. Here I am. No, neither of you is right. Here I am. Here I am. No, neither of you is right. Here I am, here I am. And usually when I do that, if I have to repeat because the wrong person comes out, I start over this, I start the song over. Where is Thumb, or where is Pinky, where is Pinky, here I am, here I am. And I, I think it's great because it starts the song over, it gives them more repetition with the song, but also it reinforces like which fingers are right and how are you doing it in time and how do you identify and which fingers come out. And, I mean, it, it asks a lot of kids these, these few songs, but I think it's super beneficial for kids. So those are my two favorite finger plays, um, Open Shut Them and Where Is Thumpkin. And I, I like them for a lot of reasons. I like Open Shut Them because it shows them and teaches them control of their hands. And it shows them sometimes it's okay if their hands, you know, are a little silly. Or like if they're in the hallway and they're touching something, you can give them a reminder, you're not supposed to touch that, be in control of your hands. And it makes it okay that they do, their hands do wander in the hallway or, or on an instrument or something the first time, but then you got to remind them, you must be in control of your hands. So that song is sort of fun for that. And I like Thumpkin because then later on um, in the school year, I'm going to do other songs where, where I might ask them to use certain fingers. And so then I've already set up what finger is named what. And so I could say, use your ring man or use your, t use your pointer or whatever. Or once we start getting to mallet technique, I might say, okay, well, you need to hold your fingers this certain way. Or if we're at a xylophone and I want them to play with their fingers, I say, play with your pointers. But taking the time in the first couple weeks to do Where is Thumpkin gives you names for each of those that then you can apply later. So those are two of my favorite uh, finger plays. If you have any questions, you can leave some questions in the comment section and I will come back later tonight and answer them because I'm going to post this video to my Facebook page. Um, but as a reminder, there are some really awesome resources you can get. Um, this is a great, great book. Both of the Fire Robin books are really good. And one more place I forgot to mention is on my blog, which is makemomentsmatter.org, I have a whole page that's rhymes. Um, common rhymes, nursery rhymes, um, and I've listed just a bunch of them there. So if you're like, huh, I wonder if there's a rhyme that would go with whatever. You can go to my page and it's a drop down link at the top and it just says rhymes and or rhymes A to Z, I can't remember. But you can just drop down and I just have a bunch of them on the page that you can look through or find and then you can copy and print however you want. Um, but that resource is there for you. Uh, thanks for listening. I hope you didn't laugh at me too much doing my silly voices and uh, finger play, but I hope you have fun with your kids. Finger plays are great, great, great fun um, and totally worth your time. All right, thanks for watching.